Alright, welcome to Dugout Steps Baseball. It is July 15th, 1980. We have uh, the uh, Montreal Expos playing the Cincinnati Reds. The Expos are 42 and 40, the Reds are 48 and 37. Starting pitchers for uh, the uh, Reds will be Paul Moscow at 6 and 1 with a 4.26 ERA and David Palmer for the Expos uh, 6 and 3 with a 2.36 ERA. Um, I'm going to be recording this on my primary uh, monitor so sometimes you'll lose track of what I'm doing because I'll be doing it off screen. And um, I'll be using ball stat or ball score for my uh, score sheet. And uh, dugout steps is the game platform and my version of the CGC um, as the uh, game engine. Um, it's slightly overcast and very windy. I think I have all the adjustments coded in here, right, if I remember correctly, as you see here. And um, we have the lineups in place already because I don't want to make you guys uh, sit through all that. You see Paul Moscow for the uh, Reds is ineffective and uh, control one and starting out for the uh, Reds. Uh, could be a bad day for him. And with, uh, without further ado, uh, we will start. Um, I don't profess to be an expert in rules, so if I mess, miss things or slip something up, just bear with me. I haven't been able to play as much as I used to, so things slip sometimes. And uh, here we go. Uh, Ron LaFleur up against Paul Moscow. Paul Moscow is... Uh, LaFleur is batting a 251. And um, let's roll the dice and see how he does. You see here is the uh, target die roll and right here is the actual die roll right here is balls and strikes for walking and striking out the first d20 and as you see the 20 rolls up a probable uh, walk and his control does not cover it so Ron LaFleur will walk and that's a very dangerous batter to start off the game with and uh, so now I gotta watch up in here, we have uh, anybody, if the possibility of a base stealing situation comes up but due to count and everything, I have that automatically flash up red. So as we switch batters and everything, you can uh, watch that and see how that, if that pops up from time to time or not. Run from four or run almost that will with a one, but it's got to show up red for him to do that. Which brings up Rodney Scott. So I click Rodney Scott here in my batter's window, which will make him the automatic base runner for all the I mean base batter, batter for the calculations and everything. You see the 66 is still in play as uh, um, Paul Moscow is ineffective against a right uh, lefty in this case 66, and um, Scott is very good against the righty. It will make 69, and then we still have the minus 3 showing up here uh, based on the count. So, uh, but that will change. Why don't we roll the dice? Um, he's a decent hit and run batter, so I'm not going to try and hit and run right away. And as you see, that pops up to 70 now because the, the pitch count changed. That's a probable out. A 6 is not within his strikeout range of minus 2. And uh, probable out 90 will put us in the pitcher catcher. And a 13, we'll go back to the uh, batters and play charts. And 13 on the ground out pitcher catcher will be uh, to the pitcher. And a range of two. And a fielder's choice for anybody uh, A or B. And a possible uh, double play for any C. So. And he's also a green air runner, so he could force an error. Uh, Scott is a C, so he, with a zero, there's no chance for him to break up the uh, 
the uh, double play. So that will be a 1-6-3 double play. And Lafleur has a possibility of forcing the error. So we will, right up here is my error check. So I will check the error, whether it calls for it or not. We'll hit I for infield. And then that will be on uh, the shortstop turning it. And there's no error on there. So it's a 1-6-3 double play to get him out of trouble right away. Very rare you'll catch him uh, the floor out like that, but they got him on that one. Which brings up Andre Dawson. Oh, I should have clicked on base too. That might have made a difference, but nah, wouldn't have made a difference. It would have only added one to his roll. And Andre Dawson is uh, not as good against righties, and uh, um, Paul Mouskow is pretty good against righties, so. Uh, Roll the dice, 75 possible hit, because it's higher than 68. Three is not within the strikeout, 51. We'll put it in the left field, so that's just a straight up single to left field. And no error check, because the XC is not, show, not showing up here. So we'll give uh, Andre Dawson, who's screaming right now at 331, and a base hit puts him on first base. Get the runners on base. Next batter will be Gary Carter. Eh, Semi-decent hit and run at 22. We'll still just go and bat away with two outs. Don't need to hit and run. And um, as you see, the count was uh, in his favor. And um, that's a probable out. No walk. 32 will be right there in the middle infield. Two would make that a shortstop. So we actually go at the 12th have a uh, possibility for the in the uh, force at second and that will be a uh, six unassisted as there's a uh, even number there and no error as that was next C not in now belay that error check on the shortstop and no error and we have a force at second shortstop only and they run off the field Sorry, got a little bit of trouble, but uh, still managed to do okay. David Palmer, uh, 6'3", 236, is up against Sam Magias, who is uh, 57 at bats, batting 246. We'll flop over here, make sure Magias is showing there. David Palmer is a control one and regular, otherwise, we'll roll the dice. 73 and 18 not not within the walk range and you see down here this blue number this is my adjusted one so if you were wild it would show higher if the, the, the dice added up right that would be a probable out the two falls within his K range so we got to check the 12 up against Sam Ajayas, uh strikeout range minus five it's outside that range so five or less would have avoided the strikeout but he had a 12 so um, he strikes out. Nice start for the game for uh, David Palmer. Dave Concepcion comes up. Nobody on. He's batting uh, 267. And he gets a base hit. 88. No strikeout. 59. That'd be a single to center field. And that brings up Ken Griffey batting 334 with 10 home runs. Okay. Ken Griffey, decent uh, hit and runner, but we're not going to hit and run yet. And he rolls 18, just outside his 19 range. 37 is probable out, middle infield. 7 is high, goes to second base. 6 is... A uh, chance to get the double play. Uh, they have a chance to break it up. So, we have here, I told you I get a little uh, out of whack sometimes. Uh, second base, six. Fielder's choice for an ABC. So, uh, there's a chance that they easily will break it up. And the fielders also have to roll 
to complete the double play. So first off, we roll up against the. Uh, it'll be a four-six double play. We need to roll a three or less to get it. No, they do not. So that'd be an automatic fielder's choice, and we got to check for the error. And there are other um, rules for double play errors, but I just go with the pivot man most of the time for ease of play. Uh, hasn't seemed to affect it anything adversely. So that would be the second second baseman. I mean, not the second baseman. Should have been the shortstop. And uh, regardless, 94 is not going to be an error. And uh, so that's just a fielder's choice for six. It brings up George Foster batting 247 with nine home runs. He's starting to get it going on. Still have a runner on base with Gary Carter, not a not a threat to steal. And um, not Gary Carter. Uh, um, Ken Griffey, still not a threat to steal. And George Forster is righty against the righty, and we'll roll. And he uh, probably out. Eight's not a strikeout. 92 puts him in the pitcher catcher. 15 makes that a pitcher. And with uh, two outs, that'll easily be a 1 3. And you got to watch up here on certain rows, it can be a 3 1. It usually goes to the first baseman. So it's a 1 3 out, and uh, Palmer finds himself out of the inning. Bring up Warren Cromarty up against Paul Moscow in the second. Nobody on base. Oh, went a little too far. I'm already back up there. He rolls the dice. Six is not a strikeout. Nine's within the range. 18 is over. Camardi seven, so that is a strikeout for Moscow. Larry Parrish comes up. And he rolls a one, and that is within his one uh, right there, so that is an automatic strikeout, being as it would be a possible wild anyway. Two strikeouts. Ellis Valentine comes up. 17, not within his walk range. Probable out. H within the strikeout range. 1 uh, falls in the minus 2 range. So he avoids the uh, strikeout and instead puts the ball in play. And that 8 is a fly ball to center field range 12. And um, you can find that on the game chart. 8, center field and uh, depth is 12, so easy fly out the center field. But he avoids the uh, striking out the side. Brings up Ray Knight, biting, batting 288. And uh, we have an out to hit situation, no strikeout, but the 10 falls within the strikeout range, seven. Ray Knight is minus nine, so yes, this is going to be an interesting win because he'll he'll fight off the strikeout and put the ball in play. That'll be a F to seven, um, which 17 is the range. So this could be interesting. For this, I have set up the little transfer button here to transfer that roll up top here, and um, then I'll hit the out to hit. It'll be a seven and fly ball. And left fielder rate three, range three, five, hitter five or less, and that is an out. So it is an F7. Does not get the hit. Brings up Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench gets the hit. 94, which goes to right field, just a straight up single. You see up here now we have a steal attempt three, but Bench is a seven. And there's also that note that I saw where the first base uh, shovels it to the pitcher instead of taking it himself to the bag. But that's only on the ball hit the first base. Uh, Johnny Bench, single to right field. Gonna put the base runner on for Harry Spillman. Harry Spillman, good against righties. Or not good against righties. And uh, he probably is out. That eight does not fall in the strikeout range. And we have a ball hit to 
uh, shortstop or second baseman. The six says that that goes to the shortstop, and it's a very bad range of 19. So that's a hard ball to play. So we'll go to the ball and play chart and look at the uh, 19. And um, a single through the middle, a double pay depth, and uh, basically I let them play it as if there were minimal outs, and there was only one. They would be a double play depth. I don't go too deep into that. So that will be a single to center field. So Spillman gets a single. We're going to attempt to run the advance the batter. I mean, they're not the batter, the runner. The runner being bench with a speed of one is probably not a good chance of it. And, uh, Cancel that out. Nope, not debug. Okay, I need to stop that. Let's see here. We go to the ball and play chart. And uh, we look at balls being hit to center field. And we see the runner in second. There'll be no modification to the throw. So we hit uh, advanced runner. Ball hit the center field. It's a hit. It's a single. And the base runner speed is one. And the fielder is five. And the fielder's reaction six. So we're going to add one to that, makes it a two. And a range of 14 makes it 16 minus the arm is nine. So you have a one and nine chance of advancing, and I never take that chance. So. Uh, we will not uh, not attempt it, and he'll stay on second base, which is why I I figured that would come up with a one runner, so I wouldn't even attempt it. Uh, Junior Kennedy will come up with bases runners in first and second, and uh, Kennedy has been batting 237, not the strongest so far. His season was 261, so he's a little underachieving. And he comes through this time with a clutch base hit, 81 as opposed to 83, 18, puts it within the double, double to one. Now the rules say you roll for a double to fly outs, uh, I mean a double to home run. So we'll just hit the FB to home run and you see nothing shows up. So that will be a straight up double to right field. With 11, that's going to be close to the fielder. I'm not even going to try to attempt to roll the advanced run for the runner on first base. It'll just be a straight up double. And David Palmer plates one, moving his uh, ERA to 242. And Kennedy gets himself a nice uh, 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 RBI. That brings up Paul Moscow with one out. He can't uh, sacrifice bunt, in my, uh, or he won't, because I find that I don't like to give away bunts on a, uh, in a um, squeeze play. They're very hard to accomplish. So we'll just let him roll for it. And he rolls a four, which you see is not within his plus three. So he avoids his strikeout, puts the ball in play. You saw he had a, a, a snowball's chance of hell of getting the base hit to begin with. And you see the 55 is within the center field range. will be the shortstop second base. Five on the uh, ones digit means the second baseman gets it. And you'll have an 11, which makes it a very doable double play ball. And the five over here means that uh, not only do they uh, have to uh, roll for the uh, uh, double play if it's outside the uh, base runners, I mean the batter's uh, double play range, but uh, the runner also has a chance to break it up. So let's go to the green play chart, center field. It will be uh, 11, fielder's choice A star. So we go back into... We go back and look at Moscow's uh, double play range, which is B. And uh, A plus is the only thing that would avoid the double play. So he's double play unless um, they need to break it up. Uh, so we don't have to roll for a fielder's getting it as it's outside his range. That's an easy double play chance. So we do got to look for. Oh, See that all that for nothing, second base. Lose track of where I'm at sometimes. Alright. So 
what we needed to look for, thinking uh, double plays instead of that, is uh, what's the base runner on third going to do on that? And you see here, both of these say stay. So the ball was hit so close to the second baseman that neither one risked advancing. So they stay on the play, and the and the the out would be out four to three. Base runners all staying. So we'll hit all base runners hold, which puts two out. Runners on second and third for Sam Magius, who struck out his first time up. Yes, and as you can see, I uh, am definitely rusty on rules and whatnot, and you'll see me fumble sometimes, and I might even miss some things. But all in all, the game's fun, and the more you play it, the more the things stay in your brain. I just haven't had time to to play it a lot lately, so things have gotten rusty. Uh, Magius rolls a 55, can't get the 77. Seven's without of his out of his strike range. 50 is another ground ball to center field, which the shortstop will catch up as that's a zero. Nine is an easy out, and we got a roll for the error, which would be in infield shortstop, and no errors on the play. So it'll be a 6-3 out, and they get out of the inning with only one run given up. Not too bad with runners in second and third with uh, uh, only one out. That brings up Chris Spire, and he is batting 273. And uh, this inning, if they can get away without uh, giving up any runs, Moscow will lose his ineffective tag. So the uh, Expos really need to uh, find a way to uh, capitalize on his ineffective warm-up. And uh, Chris Spire is a 19. You see we rolled a 19 up here. And 2 is not under 1 range, so his control doesn't help him today. And he walks Chris Fire. Brings up David Palmer, and this we will try. Uh, David Palmer is a uh, 55 sacrifice. And we're going to add uh, 15 for um, trying to bunt. And um, he needs to roll a 70. Oh, here I am again, fumbling around. Bear with me. Trying to remember uh, fielding rules for playing in. can't remember so we'll just roll through. He needs a 70 or less to uh, complete the uh, bunt. Nobody called it. So we got a 24 and a 2. The bunt chart will be a sac successful sacrifice and we're going to go down here and we're going to look at the 2. It means it goes to the catcher, the front right of the uh, plate. And a base hit of 10 and 97 is not there. And we're we're just going to go ahead and make the play on the uh, on the uh, batter and let that go. So what we got here is a sacrifice bunt to catcher. And we assist to put out three, uh, actually four. Second baseman covered first, and that puts uh, Spire on second with one out. Ron LaFleur up. And Ron LaFleur does not get the base hit. 14 is neither a walk nor a, uh, a base hit. A 100 is a possible foul out. 11 does not fall into the ballpark range, so that foul out is in play. And um, 
Foul out 11 is a foul out to the first baseman, so we'll go X3 on that. Bring up Rodney Scott. Two out. And he does not come close to a hit either. That's not either a walk nor a strikeout. 20 is in uh, third base range. He's got to go to first base because uh, 19 is so high. He had to range really far for that ball. But he will complete it. No chance for an error. That's an out 5-3 to three on the fours at first base. And the inning. And with that, we can take off the uh, ineffective tag for uh, Moscow. Do that now before we forget. And it brings up David Palmer against Dave Concepcion. Concepcion got a single, but grounded out into a uh, you know, fielder's choice last time. And um, this time it's a possible walk, but no, you see the one down here. Um, it's uh, within his control rating, so he avoids this, the. Uh, the walk and you go on then with the potable out which is one and fit within the strikeout range Concepcion is a zero so the 14 to strikeout and it brings up Ken Griffey nobody on barely misses getting a hit same thing, no walk, no strikeout. 15's within the strikeout range. 9 is outside of Griffey's minus 2, so he strikes out and avoids an error check. A lot of strikeouts happen in this game. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. George Foster comes to the plate, still a 1 1 game, and that's a probable out. No strikeout, no walk. 11's within the strikeout range. 8. Within his strikeout range, plus one, anything would have been a strikeout for him. So he strikes out also. You see that hustle in the top right corner. If it had been a ball in play, he would have had to roll against the speed to see if he could have beaten the throw to first base on the die 20. So, um, but that's no moot point because he went down on the strikeout. So that was an easy inning for David Palmer. Uh, one, two, three. It's still one, one game going into the fourth inning. We have Andre Dawson coming up. He got, he got a single last time. And um, let's see how he can do this time. 17 is going to definitely be an out. A one is within. Uh, Lost myself again, bear with me. See how I managed that one. I gotta get back around to Foster. Or Foster, Dawson. I'm getting all confused here today. And he's a minus five, so that's not a strikeout. Uh, it would have been had he had a uh, couple different tags from the. Uh, Warm up, but he does not. Or powering stuff. So that'll just be uh, 49, probably out 49 in a fly ball left field. And he'll easy pull that in. You see up here that if it were a sl we would have to roll against uh, fielder against speed if it had been a ground ball to the infield, but it's a fly ball to left field. That is a moot point. Gary Carter comes to the plate back in 289. And he's going to probably be out on this one. And uh, three is within strikeout range. Ten is outside of that. So he strikes out. Brings up Warren Cromarty. Warren Cromarty strokes one. 93. A single to right field. Way back to the wall. But nobody on base. It's not going to make much of a difference. And uh, he's not going to try to push it or anything. So he just got a single. And that brings up Larry Parrish. And we look up here, they're just the old attempt, too. We look at uh, 
Warren Cromarty, he has a six, so uh, if that were a one or a two, he would be able to try to take, take and steal a base, but that's not going to happen. Do out, we won't try to hit and run. He'll probably be out. That's not a strikeout or a walk. 56, and that's a fly ball to left field. Easy play for the left fielder. The nine's right near the player. And another fly ball to left field. And we go down again. Top of the fourth inning. Ray Knight up against David Palmer. So Ray Knight comes up and gets a good uh, roll. And uh, 18 is a double range. So the first roll fly ball to home run. You see that double turns into a home run. Nothing shows up, so no, it does not. So that'll be just a plain old double to left field, but a good way for the Reds to start the inning. And that brings up Johnny Bench with one on base. So it looks like uh, David Palmer's not having a day. I'm already giving up uh, five hits and a run. And let's see how he does against Bench. This time he gets Bench. Um, no strikeout. But it's probably one out. 59 is a uh, center field. 9 means the second baseman has it. 15 means it's kind of a close play. And the E means we'll have to check for an error. So let's see where we're at here. Nope, no, no double change. Play check. Knights on second. So we want to just see if uh, second baseman can A, throw the ball or without com completing the error. And we want to look at the advanced charts to see if 15 will allow the base runner on second to go to third. And um, he can take a chance if uh, he's in a, there's an A plus uh, batter at the plate. But um, a very low speed chance. And um, I don't think we'll press that. So we'll just go with uh, checking the second baseman for an error. And there's no error, so it'll be four to three, and a runner holds. And it brings up Spillman with a runner on second. Another probable out. No strikeout, no walk. Tens within his range. One. It's Billman. He's a plus one, so that's definitely a strikeout. And that helps uh, Palmer get out of that situation a little bit. Now it's a pretty doable play uh, situation with uh, two out and a runner on second. Brings up Kennedy. Kennedy rolls the dice, 18, no walk, 93, 93 is pitcher catcher, one is a catcher, so that'll be an out two to three. Two to three. See if I can remember where I was at here. Uh, that was Valentine was coming up. I think we ended the inning. Uh, Junior Kennedy went down. So, yes. Uh, Ellis Valentine comes up against Moscow. It is the uh, fifth inning. You see he's got one more inning left before we have to check for the wear and tear. Um, 98, possible hit to out. No strikeout or walk. 94 for Ellis Valentine is a hit the right field, and that's pretty close to the fielder, so it should pretty be a pretty easy out. Yeah, that hit is to uh, right field, which is uh, single. Nine. Uh, three against range check of one, so it'll be out of not out of nine or less. And he gets the hit. So Valentine with the leadoff single. And brings up Chris Spire. Chris Spire is a decent hit and runner. Now I think I'm going to actually try a hit and run on this one. I, uh, and 53 will be it out as normal. No strikeout, nothing. 61 is a uh, fly ball to center field. 
and uh, hit and run plays, uh, fly outs, add 10 to hit to hit the out base formula. And we're not doing a hit the out. So that will just be a basically a fly ball to center field and the runner will get back. No loss. He brings up David Palmer and he's in the sacrifice mode again. And he's going to try to drop it down. This time, however, he does not get the, the sacrifice as it's 74 is above his 70. We'll look at the 11 on that same bunt chart and we're going to look for the failed sacrifice. And uh, that goes to the pitcher. And um, it's right at the pitcher. So we want to check for a double play as normal against uh, his. Uh, Grounded a double play, and that looks like a fielder's choice B. So that's a fielder's choice. And if he were a C or or worse, then that would be a uh, easy double play. And as we normally would check uh, against the. double play on a normal basis um, four four is barely within the range to check out if I remember right so we will go ahead and roll to see if the uh, if the uh, second uh, shortstop covering second base can turn that double play or not so we're looking to get a one six four double play and six needs a three so we will see if he can roll a three or less and he does not so it's just fielder's choice um, and we'll call that a six to four, uh, 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 fielder's choice, six unassisted, and, oh no, oh boy, I blew that one out, let's go undo that, could have been a one to six, undo that, go back in there, fielder's choice, one to six, let's do this correctly, and brings up Ron LaFleur. Ron LaFleur gets another walk. Walk overrides the double, uh, the hit, and um, to, to puts him on base. And no chance to steal because he's got a pitcher in front of him. Brings up Rodney Scott. Rodney Scott needs a 75, 76, get it, does not, does not get the walk. 68, fly ball center field. 17, close to the wall, but not going to get it. We'll check it just case, but nothing there. Fly out center field, ends the inning. And uh, Moscow avoids yet another uh, scare. And brings up Paul Moscow to the plate against Palmer. Moscow batting 133. And he will probably strike out and does with a plus three. So that's an easy strikeout for Palmer. And brings up Sam Magius. And he will not strike out, but we got to check again because the six is within the uh, K rating. We're getting a lot of them this game. And the eight is over five, so that is a strikeout. Strikeout number two for the inning. And uh, Palmer's having a good day of it. Both pitchers are, actually. And Concepcion, probable out. 17's not a walk. Seven, though, was in the K rating. Seven is over his zero, so no no possibility of an out the hit because that strikeout takes the precedence and he strikes out the side. Andre Dawson, top of the sixth, up against Paul Moscow. Out the hit, but a possible walk. And the control was eight as opposed to one, so Andre Dawson gets a freebie. And that brings up Gary Carter. Um, Andre Dawson steals on a four. There's a steal attempt zero showing. You see, I have not turned on aggressive base running. If I had, um, it gives you more of a chance to steal bases. But he's not going to attempt to do it with a zero. And um, Carter, we're going to let him swing away. That would probably be leading out. We got a hit batter check. No hit batter. No walk strikeout. 58 is a fly ball to left field. He'll still catch it. No errors showing up, so that's just a fly ball left field. No advance on a four. 
And brings up Warren Cromarty batting 300. And Warren Cromarty does not walk. Gets a uh, grounder to right to uh, center field. And uh, with Dawson on first base, good chance for the double play is that's a seven. So Warren Cromarty is a C grounded in double play. He bats in a lot of double plays. So uh, let's go to the grounded in double play chart center. Seven is a B. C is not in that range, so the fielders don't have to roll anything. That's an automatic double play unless the batter can roll through it. So we look at Cromartie's speed of three, and we try to roll to D20, and he rolled a 14, so he does not beat it out. So that would be a 6-4-3 double play. Top of the sixth, or bottom of the sixth, I'm very late at, Ken Griffey batting 332. Got a tight game going on here. He comes up and does not get the... Uh, the hit, which would have been a possible home run had he gotten a hit. Not a strikeout, but the six falls within his K rate, 13, well over to two. So Griffey instead swings for defenses, but whiffs right through it, gets a strikeout. Look at all them strikeouts for Palmer today. He's just having an awesome day. Foster. He's probably out. Does not walk. 54 is to center field. Six is a shortstop. 6-3 out, slow roller hit, 6-3, fielder's a 4, Foster's a 2, not even going to roll it because uh, there's not a chance. And that would be a 6-3 out. Brings up Ray Knight. Ray Knight gets, uh, that's a hit, and 5 is within his center field home run rating. So what we do here is we check to see if the uh, home run uh, gets tracked down at the wall or anything. So the, the, uh, the ball's been hit the center field, so type an eight in. Pitcher's home run against the righty is a minus three. So we'll type that in. I didn't automate any of this yet and I haven't had time. The batter's power type is a minus. And as you see, the home run stands. So Ray Knight pushes one up over the, the wall to make it a uh, two-one game, a two-nothing game. And Palmer's now at 241. So Ray Knight, uh, double on a home run, triple on a single, and he's got the cycle. Brings up Johnny Bench, who's uh, singled and grounded out. Nobody on base. Yeah, another possible hit. And uh, 18's not a walk. And um, 27 on bench is within his home run the right field range. So we go through the routine again. Go to 9. And pitcher's right against the your righties at minus 3. And we see that that one's not even close. That's over the wall. So back to back home runs. And uh, Palmer's reeling a little bit here. He's given up uh, seven hits and three runs now. Back-to-back -back home runs. I'm going to try to get them through this inning. I mean, we're talking the 80s, so they tried to uh, get it as long as possible. But the hit count's starting to go up. So uh, if he can't get somebody out here for that third out real soon, yeah, I'll pull him. And uh, that brings up Spillman. Spillman's probably out. 14, no walk, no strikeout. 88 on the out chart is fly ball to right field. We have an E showing here. We got to check that. So that would be an E against a 9. No error. And so that's a fly ball to right field, and the inning should be over. But the damage is done. Uh, Reds plate two more, and the Expos are in, in dire need of some good news here. So we got Paul Moscow up against Warren Cromartie. And, um, yep. And, um, I mean, Larry Parrish. Confusing myself again. And he is 
in the seventh inning and you see his fatigue is six so we gotta roll and see if the D10 is within his rating there and it is so um, hold on a second another interference all right back again um, okay Moscow rolled a one so he's easily going to stay in the game um, he has against him uh, three hits no runs and um, we'll go to the main chart and uh, he is a grade uh, oh boy should have looked at that before we went he's a he's a rate C and we look here um, four minus uh, this will be the number of innings he can go beyond his stamina rating so four minus runs allowed to zero plus stamina rating is his total innings so so he he can he can pitch up to ten possible innings right now. Um, so uh, we'll see if that changes or not. He's gone for a complete game. As a home roll, I used to make them roll every inning, but the the game specifically says just one. So uh, we'll see how I feel about that. I just sometimes just wing it. Anyway, Parish up against uh, Moscow, and uh, 19. It's not within his walk range, and the pitch is not wild, so that'll be a probable out. 62 at the fly ball to center field, real close to the fielder. F8. And that brings up Ellis Valentine batting 312. Possible hit batter one off the pitcher, and it is a hit batsman. So Ellis Valentine gets hit by the pitch and becomes a base runner. Brings up Chris Spire. Chris Spire hit and run 30 again, and I kind of like that. So we'll have him go for hit and run again if the uh, if the count is conducive. See, so it counts a three, and um, not a favored count for a hit and run. So, uh, we'll just go ahead then and do a regular at bat for him. And uh, Chris Spire will not strike out. He'll probably an out. 71 is a fly ball to center field deep. And we got to check for an error. So, we'll try for center fly ball to center field. For, it didn't make the wall, so it's, it flew out. And I believe the wind is uh, blowing in from right to left. And no, I do not check for rain. Um, one of the things I'm lazy on. And the air it will be uh, outfield in nine. And there's no air. So it'll be a simple fly ball to outfield, even though it kind of scared it. It went deep to the wall, but he pulled it down fine. The wind blew it back in. And that brings two down. And uh, we come up with uh, Palmer to batter. Now uh, I will go to my handy dandy uh, pitching status. And let's draw that over here because you can see what I'm doing. And um, I'm going to pop this. We were looking at uh, a pinch hitter for the Expos against the right hander. And I have all this set up so that uh, the real life appearances based on games played, etc., should give them a proper chance against righty or lefties to get pinch hits in pinch hit situations. So against the righty for the Expos would be Tony Bernazard. And he is available, so we will go back into uh, their uh, bench, find uh, Bernazard, copy, bring him up to the visitor tab, paste him over David Palmer, go to ball stat, and get pinch hitter, Bernazard. Bernazard's coming in batting 196, not very good, um, but uh, still better than Palmer. 
and um, roll the dice and he comes through barely does not strike out does not walk 33 on his uh, card barely escapes a triple so he'll just get a single to seven and that's a pretty deep hit ball and uh, if you look at the uh, batter and play ball and play charts two outs we add eight to the runner speed so that all being in question here we go to Valentine his speed is five he is on uh, first base and Bernazard hit that ball to left field so let's go look at the ball and play left chart single to the left field runner on first so we got to subtract five from the runner add eight so we'll add three to the runner speed all right let's go advance runner here ball was hit to left field it's a hit it's a single and then base runner speed we're adding three and uh, so that will be a total of eight and fielders range five but uh, his reactions three so we're going to subtract it's a good reaction so we're going to subtract two from the range which is nine and his arm is four so really we do not want to try this um, because it's with all those different factors he just got a good jump on the ball I'm going to click yes just so you could see what would happen but we're going to ignore it because I'm not actually doing the play and uh, as you see it would be a low chance to to get it and up here would show that it would that he is out at that base but like I said I would not have tried that there's just too slim a chance of, of getting it but the outcomes usually were always pasted right there so uh, that would be a single and he just moves the base runner one play and uh, a good pinch hit situation that moves him up to a 201 uh, uh, and looks like that was a good call on the manager to bring up Bernazer despite the low batting average and brings up Ron LaFleur Ron LaFleur is batting 250 and he's a righty versus a righty and uh, we're going to give Moscow a little bit of leeway here because uh, you know he's got two three run cushion yet and uh, we've got uh, two outs so very good possibility he can get out of this sticky situation first real uh, problem he's faced this this game you know other than being a little bit of control problem with four walks he scattered the hits nicely so let's see what he can do against LaFleur and LaFleur comes through gets another hit 46 on so LaFleur's card is barely a single oh in a single to, not barely but a single to uh, left field again close to the fielder we're also two outs and we're going to try to bring in the uh, runner from center field I mean second base so single left field runner on second no modification um, so uh, we'll leave the runner on first not try to follow up and we're going to try let's see if we can get uh, we're going to add eight to Ellis Valentine and let's see if we like the odds on this one seven hit one base runner speed is 13 now with the added eight 13 um, bad reactions one so we add that to 13 which is 14 and uh, subtract the range which is <coughs> my my add the range to 13 is 20 subtract the arm fours uh, 16 and I like trying anything over 15 so we'll attempt this uh, Valentine's going to try home and uh, Bernazer will stop at second and you'll see here that uh, he is safe at third so uh, and you know, runners I mean he's safe at home and Bernazer will stay at second so Moscow lets one run in which will take him down to uh, still being able to pitch a full nine innings if he can get out of this situation without giving up another run Brings up Rodney Scott. We'll give him one more shot here, one more runner, and uh, let's roll the dice. And this time it looks like he's going to pull out of there, but we do have that slow roller in effect. But I think the uh, out roll is high enough to where it'll be a fly ball. Um, probably out. The 80 is a fly ball to right field. Very short, but still nothing to check there. And uh, that's a fly ball to. Uh, 
outfield and he is out and we brought in a pinch hitter so we're going to need to uh, change things around here so let's take a look at what we got here Rodney Scott was last one to bat and uh, we brought in Bernard so Bernard can come in and stay in at second base and we'll do that we'll go ahead and pull the uh, double switch so we'll put his uh, second base right in as our second baseman now and in ball score we will go into the defensive screen and but we're not sure in at second base and then we will bring in a pitcher to take Rodney Scott's vacant place at, set, at the position two in the lineup and for that we go into my handy dandy pitching status again we put uh, inning number seven And again, I have this set up so all available relievers that do not need rest and are not on the disabled list, etc., will, will, and pitched actually in the seventh inning, have a chance. And in this case, it will be uh, Elias Sosa coming in for the Expos. And um, take over Rodney Scott pitcher 331 we'll go over here to the uh, home tab and paste him in here also give him a warm up and he comes in ineffective with very good control so uh, here we go again uh, it's not gonna be an easy road for the Expos they're already buried they tried to come back into it and um, we're gonna do pitcher Sosa second and everything then should be in place as you see so junior kennedy then junior kennedy against the uh, ineffective sosa needs a 70 or or more to uh, get a hit and uh, 97 is a probable hit but uh, because it's uh, in the hit the outs range we'll have to check for that Sosa, or not Sosa, Kennedy. We'll look up to five. Uh, that's a very low number. We're getting a lot of the low numbers. It's very possibly, well, he's a very light hitter. We're only hitting one home run all season, so that will be a double. No fly ball, or no double to home run. So he uh, just doubles the left field to end up the uh, to start out the inning again for the Reds. So Sosa comes in right away and throws a little bit of fuel on the fire. Brings up Moscow. He had a rough inning last time, but I think I'm going to let him uh, let him hit because we got a run in a second. We do have a lead, and he has pitched a good game. So uh, on base, roll the dice. Wow, he also gets a hit. And uh, as you can see, um, the ineffective is probably costing Sosa pretty good. Uh, he's got some very low ineffective numbers compared to his regular numbers so this is affecting him pretty much uh, 87 on Moscow would be a single and uh, I'm not too worried about the uh, field of one two because I'm just going to advance the runner one base and uh, here we go well uh, Sosa's come in and put the first two batters on base for Sam Magius and the, the red machine's running a little bit here and Magius needs into 60 or more to get a hit and uh, actually 62 now with the count. Check for a wild pitch, no wild pitch. We got an error on the uh, charts here. So probably out, no strike out or anything. 52 is ground ball right up the middle. And that'll be handled by the shortstop, the 14. And Magius is a B grounded in a double play. So the 14 and a grounded in the center field will net us an AB. So the fielders have to roll to see if they can do the double play. And the two is below three, below uh, uh, checking for it, so the runners can't beat it. So we just got to check to see if the fielders can turn a double play now. So we roll on uh, uh, second baseman. We need a four or less on the uh, D20. 
17 not going to happen and uh, we'll actually go on the pivot man infield four no error so we have a 6-4 fielder's choice runner on first and um, that uh, puts let's, we've got to double check that see what happened into the guy, with the guy on third base keep forgetting to check all that stuff uh, that was a 14 so the man on third base is going to stay so we got a fielder's choice 6-4 And we got to undo that because I uh, messed up again. Let the runner score. Fielder 6 4. He stays and he's out. And uh, that brings us into one out. And still runners from first and third. Dave Concepcion, who has struck out twice and singled. He will get a hit. And no strikeout because the hit takes precedence. 29. Single to left field. Deep single. Left field is uh, runner on first. Uh, and that is a uh, subtract five. So do we want uh, Magius to try it? Uh, he'll have a zero speed in the long run. We'll try it. I mean, let's see, we'll see what the odds look like. It's a pretty deep hit ball. Uh, all right, fielder three. I mean, you got a bad reaction, so we're going to add six to the speed, which is six. Add that to the range, which is 18, then. To track the arm, which is 11, and no, we don't want to try that. But as you see... We have another run scores and the runner stay on first and second. So uh, the Reds are starting to spread this thing out here, and uh, Sosa will stay ineffective. And uh, if he doesn't start putting somebody out real quick, we'll pull him out also. Again, this is the 80s. They didn't just yank pitchers like they do nowadays, but also I'm not going to let them fan the fire. We'll give him Griffey. And. Um, Roll the dice. Oh, look at this. Griffey is awesome with men on against righties. So he uh, only needs a 47 or more and got the worst count possible. Um, he did not walk. And uh, Griffey rolls a 76, which is a single to nine. A runner on first then on a single to nine will um, add five to the base runner speed. And uh, but, uh, because there's a runner on second, well, play will be made on the guy gone to us to home plate if we want to do that so uh, let's see where we're at here we have uh, Magius will be a base runner five it is a deep hit ball so let's see whether we like the odds or not eight hit one base runner speed is five fielders range of five minus the speed is zero Range of one, add one, 14 minus seven. I don't like them odds, so uh, we will just go ahead and uh, hold them to a single base. So, um, four hits, one run, one out, Foster up. Um, knowing that uh, Foster is also pretty good against right-handers with men on. Base is loaded. Game's on the line. Effective. Uh, yeah, but we bring somebody in. Righty against a righty. He is good against righties, but he's ineffective right now. Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. Experience says uh, Sosa so far is 493. He's having a rough season. Let's pull him put somebody else in second position. Let's go out and get the uh, pitching status in here again. 
April again for the seventh inning, uh, and that's uh, Bill Gullickson if he is available. So let's real quick go over to my charts here and see what what it looks like with his starts and everything. 715, Bill Gullickson right here. He's primarily uh, relieving at this point. He doesn't have another start for about four days yet, so he is definitely available to relief. So we'll bring in Bill Gullickson to relieve uh, the struggling Sosa who's responsible for all the base runners. And we'll bring him in second place, to second position also because uh, they have not had a chance to bat yet. So, um, we'll go to the uh, Expo's bench, lead out Sosa. Bring in Bill Gullickson, as you see, uh, he relieved five games, and this will be one of them. And we'll bring him in, replacing Sosa. Pitcher 321. I see there that effective, ineffective warm-up really hurt Sosa. And, and uh, Gullickson comes in with men on base and inherited runners, and he is grouped with decent control. So this could be a turnaround. He has a chance of getting them out of this. And um, and he will go up against Foster. And uh, Foster is good against righties, um, but uh, Gullickson is good against righties too, especially when he inherits runners. You see he's an 88 over here. So, um, you can see that as it stands right now, uh, Foster's to-do hit number will be around 85. So let's roll the dice. He gets a 17, which is no walk. Uh, 28, which is way less than the hit. 39, which gets us into the uh, middle infield, and the 9 is the second base. And 3 is definitely not going to be a double play. Um, uh, as you see, runners advance, so um, it'll just be a uh, it'll just be a um, four to three out. He had to range so far to get it. He had no chance to catch anybody but the base runner, and another run comes in. So that'll be an out RBI for uh, fielder's choice RBI for uh, Foster. And the Reds now lead it, a score five to one. Uh, and uh, the game's starting to get a little out of control. Brings Ray Knight up with two outs, men on second and third. And uh, still has inherited runners. So this is now the hit possibility, no walk strikeout. 28 is ground ball to third base, easily within uh, a, a force out range or whatnot. But we need to check for the out to hit. So it should be an out. Experience says when it's that close, it's very rare they'll uh, roll a hit. And as you see, he needs a three or less to get a hit, and he's out. Um, and uh, as that goes to uh, third base, we have the third base and make uh, an exceptional play to throw out the runner at first, and and the inning. Uh, the runners weren't forced. He would have had a possibility to force the runner on third base and get him out there, but uh, because there's, they're unforced runners, we don't do that. All right, uh, top of the eighth, Moscow coming off a rough inning. Want to see if he can still make an on face Andre Dawson. And uh, no runners on, and um, he is still effective, so let's see what happens here. Well within there, Andre Dawson, not a strike gap, but we got to check it again because it's in his range there. 13's definitely higher than that, and Dawson strikes out. So uh, still looks like still looks like he's, Moscow's doing rather good. He's uh, four walks and four strikeouts. Uh, brings up Gary Carter. And um, Gary Carter will also roll it out. 47, it's ground ball to first base, 12's right next to the plate, so uh, that's an unassisted first base, we'll roll for the error on the first baseman, and you see he commits a first base error, so uh, reaches error, 
E3. And that will be an error on Harry Spillman. So Gary Carter is on first base with uh, one out. Brings up Warren Cromarty. Warren Cromarty's 29. Pretty good hit and runner. You're, you're four, four, four batters away, though. You don't want to take too many chances. And um, I should have right there because he would have covered the batter and uh, we would have re-rolled, but now he's probably out. 92 um, is a PC. Um, three is a catcher. And... Um, we need to go check that out for a double play possibilities and everything. ABC is a fielder's choice. So very good chance he's going to not get the double play. But that would be a catcher. And um, Cromartie is a C. So uh, that will be a uh, he bats from the left side of the plate. That will be a four, uh, two... 2-6, 3 double play as the second baseman probably would have covered. Um, so we're going to roll against the shortstop. So we need a 3 or less to try to turn that double play and do not get it. And also we'll roll an error on the shortstop. And he commits an error also. So the wheels are falling off defensively as the shortstop then throws one into the dirt. And uh, two errors in the inning, and uh, nothing against uh, Moscow, but things are starting to look a little shaky here with two outs, uh, one out, two one, and um, we'll keep an eye on him, bringing up Larry Parrish. He does have a pretty good cushion, so we don't want to uh, be too premature. And uh, he rolls a probable out here, 24 is the third base, and here we go, seven. Uh, Parrish is a uh, C, so a very good chance for double play here. Seven, as you see, is an A or B, so it would be an automatic double play. Um, and uh, four does allow them to check uh, for a, uh, see if the runner beats it out. So we got to check Larry Parrish's speed of three. And no, not even close. So that would be a five, four, three double play. And um, that helps clear things up pretty damn good there for uh, Paul Moscow. And Gullickson will come up then in the eighth uh, against Johnny Bench. And um, he's still grooved. Did two batters there. You see he's got two innings. Uh, so he's still got another four outs that he can pitch without having to check for any kind of tiring or anything. So uh, we'll let him uh, make sure we uncheck everything. We'll let him pitch up against Johnny Bench. Uh, Johnny Bench is uh, is uh, pretty rough against righties. Um, I mean, he's overall a good batter, but uh, pretty rough against uh, righties. And uh, Gullickson is also very good against righties. As we got the lead, I'll go ahead and not pinch hit for him and leave him in there. And um, he uh, probably is out. And that will be a uh, out 4-3 to three with no check for error, and it's an easy play. Uh, brings up Harry Spillman, and Harry Spillman also, uh, he's pretty good against righties, and uh, he rolls, he's uh, probably out, 89, which is a line out to uh, center field, we'll go over to the ball and play, uh, line out, shortstop pitcher, catcher, we look up nine, that's uh, second base, I mean shortstop second base pitcher, second baseman, line out, and uh, that way in the... Uh, And his appearance, L4, brings up Junior Kennedy. Junior Kennedy uh, is not very good against uh, righties, but not too bad. Um, and we're ahead. Um, he is a good fielder, so we'll leave him in there. And he controls a walk anyway, as the control doesn't drop within Gullickson 4. So Kennedy uh, gets a walk out of Gullickson, who's otherwise been untouchable. And that brings up Moscow. So we have a little uh, conundrum here. We uh, do we leave Moscow in and uh, with two outs, just swing away. We got a five four, five one lead, and he has pitched strong. We go for a a, a um, complete game. Uh, there's no save opportunity. And um, 
one more run, he would become ineffective and have to pull down. So uh, we'll leave him in there. I like I like in this era. I like going for the complete games. So we'll let him in there, and he'll just bat away with two L. And uh, see where it goes. And uh, he does not draw a walk. Just probably an out. 67. That's a fly ball to center field. Easy out. No errors to check or anything. And that ends the inning. We go to the top of the ninth. And uh, top of the ninth looks like Valentine, Spire, and Renazer, depending on pinch hitters and situations. Not where you would want to be with uh, four runs down and your last chance, but uh, it's it's cards you're dealt, you deal with them. So Valentine, very good against righties, very good against everybody. About a 315 in a uh, in uh, real life, and he's been uh, doing good so far in this replay. He's batting 312, and uh, this game alone, he is uh, one for two with in a hit bat too. So we'll leave him in there. And he needs uh, right around 71. We'll roll the dice. Goes to 65. 95. Barely under hits to uh, out. And uh, 18 is not a walk. And here we go. Another low number. That was in his home run the right fie left field. So we got to check home run the fly ball. That's the left field. Pitcher's home run rating is minus 5 against the righty. And you see that goes clear over the fence. So Valentine pulls him within one more, and that also uh, takes him down to where he cannot complete this game. And so the manager's kind of seeing um, Moscow going out and realizing that his, uh, his uh, little strategy keeping uh, Moscow in there to hit and uh, try to get the complete game just blew up in his face. And he will go ahead and signal to the bullpen. And we will keep the pitcher in the ninth slot because uh, that's the last shot spot to bat it. So let's go to the pitching status here. Go to the ninth inning. And let's see what will bring in Tomlin for the Reds. It's not a save opportunity. And good thing, Tomlin been kind of struggling this replay. He's three and one with a 7.52 ERA, has zero saves. So let's go to the Reds bullpen. And uh, you see, in real life, he was a uh, 5.54. So actually, this is a good call from my uh, my uh, reliever charts to bring him in because. Uh, Probably the pitcher they would have brought in in real life anyway. Usually, when I do something like that, oh, I missed or something that didn't didn't paste right. Let's do that again. Yeah, might help to select the whole card. And whenever I bring in a reliever, if it does does if it looks like you're bringing in the uh, save man and he doesn't pitch an extraordinary amount of games and uh, it's not a safe situation I usually roll it twice the same result comes up then I bring him in it's not a cut in stone do what you want with it uh, Dave Tomlin come in he's a pitcher 7-0 no chance for an error from him bring him over here to the pitcher screen get his card in there warm him up Oh, here we go. He just starts making things interesting as he warms up ineffective and wild. So uh, when we're at bat now, we watch this number right here because the dice roll right. That'll be your walk number. Um, that'll add the two onto anything where I roll a one or a two. And um, so he faces Spire with nobody on base, and it's a 5-2 game. And, of course, in real life, you would not know that... Uh, Tomlin's ineffective. You'd probably see that he just kind of looks a little uh, around the plate out there, but I mean, you, you'd still stick with him. It's nothing unordinary, so it's not like you're going to just throw another reliever in there because you don't like the uh, the warm up roll you got. And um, so let's see what we do here. Chris Spire against Dave Tomlin, ineffective. Tomlin's ineffective numbers are very low, he's in the 50s. 
And you see his low, he got low numbers to begin with. So this should be very interesting. Spire rolls, barely comes in under. We got an 18 on the uh, wild. Spire's a 19. See how close all this gets. It's just so uh, you guys can see how close this came to a walk. That three right there, if that had been a two, that 18 would have turned to a 20 and would have been over his rate. So he would have uh, walked. But because it is not, it is a probable out. 96 on his card is a pop up to the third baseman. Uh, double check, make sure it didn't go in the left field. And pop up to the third base, 17. That's, uh, you see that to pop up to the left fielder. And uh, brings up Renazard. Renazard now batting 201. He got a pinch uh, single last time. They keep the inning alive. And um, Renazard has uh, got a uh, second chance to redeem himself and keep this inning going here. Give him a chance. And he rolls a 96, which will be a hit to an out. He rolls also a 17, but that's not a walk. He is a 19. 44 is a single to left field, and we got a check hit to out. You see at 19, that's going to make it uh, hard for that fielder to get that ball. So it'll probably stay a hit. And as you see, out of 7 to left, but the fielder is good, which is why there's that chance. And he gets the hit still. So uh, Bernazard, actually, for having a little uh, um, batting average coming in this game, has just raised it by uh, almost 10 points in this game alone and gets a single, winds up on first base. And um, we're not going to go best. You know, let's go about aggressive base running because we're only three runs away now. Um, but still, still attempt three, and he is a five, so that's not going to be a, uh, a steal a chance. That brings up Lafleur. Lafleur is a 12 hit and runs. So we're not even going to attempt that. Just bat away. And uh, Lafleur is uh, not horrible up against, uh, he's not a bad batter. Same left or right. And uh, Tom is slightly more effective against uh, lefties than right. So uh, advantage Lafleur, and here we go. Um, you see here that uh, the one was under the wild, so the uh, wild two took effect, but it's still not within Lafour's 19, so um, that will be a double. We'll check for double to home run. Nothing. And that'll be a double to left field. And the range will say that I'm not going to try to get, uh, not try to force the issue and bring Renazard home. So all of a sudden, Tomlin's coming and made a mess of things. He's got runners on second and third with one out. Which brings up Gullickson, and we definitely know we go for a pinch hitter in this situation. So we're looking for a uh, Montreal pitch hitter against uh, lefty. And that will be uh, John Tamargo. So we will go get Tamargo off of the uh, bench. <coughs> And we'll put him in where Gullickson was. Ah. And um, runners on uh, first and second and third. So no double play attempt. And uh, here we go. Tamargo uh, does not get the hit. Does not get a hit to an out. Uh, probably an out. Uh, it's a ranging out, so we're going to have to check it. That'll be a 6-3 out, but I do believe the 19 is going to allow batters to score. Nineteen. Yep. Uh, runner from third, 11 plus speed would be a chance to get home. And we have uh, Bernazard and Lafleur can both take that chance. And Bernazard is a 5. Uh, adding 11 would be a 16. And we're going to try for home. Um, the defense is going to just take the, take the out. That's too much of a chance. So we're going to go out 6-3 to three and allow the runner to score and hope that uh, 
Tomlin can keep that last runner from coming in with one out. I mean, they still got two run cushions, so we'll, we'll stick with him. I don't like, uh, you're very limited in relievers in this era, so I don't like overusing them. Um, Andre Dawson, and they're still running on third, and uh, one pop of the bat, and he could own this, and does not come through. Um, uh, probably an out. Well, look at that, 41 was all he needed to get that. To, wow, uh, 41 will be a uh, ground ball to the second baseman. He had to range very far, as you see with the 20. So it'll be an out four to three runner would have scored, but there is no error or anything showing, and they, he does not beat the play out. And uh, that won the game, and uh, we will go in here then and hit the end. Um, gives Palmer the loss, Moscow to win. And get a quick look at the box score before we wrap up this recording. Box score, as you see, very nice box score and bar, uh, ball step, ball score. And uh, that puts Moscow at 7-1 uh, and one, and Palmer with the loss at 6-4. and four. So uh, thank you for joining me in a rather interesting game between the uh, Reds and the Expos. And the Reds win it 5-3 despite a late uh, challenge from the Expos. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day.